Hello and welcome to Mass in the Five Paragraph Essay. In this course, you're going to learn about three different types of essays, starting with the definition essay. Now, whenever you write an essay, whenever you write an essay, you want to develop the most important part of your essay first, and that is your thesis statement. But you have to choose a topic. If you don't have a topic, what are you going to write about? So the way to choose your topic is start off with something, anything, and then narrow it down. So an example, let's say I want to write about careers. I can't do that in a five paragraph essay because there are hundreds of thousands of careers. So I need to narrow it down a little bit. So I might go something like careers in education. And there are also a lot of careers in education, I know because I'm an educator. So I still need to narrow this down. So I might go with something like a middle school science teacher. Now I want you to give it a try. Start off with a broad topic, let's say food, or animals or sports, something really common, and then narrow it down. Once you have done that, it's then time to develop the most important part of your essay, your thesis statement. Now, if, now, if you haven't taken the course that shows you how to make an outline or how to make a thesis statement, then you might want to brush up on that. Otherwise, this is going to be a quick refresher. So your thesis statement does two things. It lets the reader know the purpose of your paper and the significance of the topic. The purpose of your paper is always what you're writing about. And the significance is how or why you're writing about that topic. I went with the middle school science teacher. So here's my good example. A career as a middle school science teacher is beneficial because there's a need for teachers in this field. STEAM is a growing industry and an educator can find fulfillment in this position. So the purpose of my paper, what I'm writing about, is a career as a middle school science teacher. And the significance, how or why am I writing about this? Well, remember, this is a five paragraph essay. So I need three main ideas because I'll have three body paragraphs. My first body paragraph will focus on how there's a need for teachers in this field. My second body paragraph is all about how STEAM is a growing industry. And then my third one will be all about how an educator can find fulfillment in this position. Add an introduction and a conclusion with those three points. That's my essay. This is why the thesis statement is so important. Now, I do have a weak example. I think being a middle school science teacher is a good opportunity. Why do you think this is weak? Well, I'll tell you. First, it's an opinion. When you're writing a formal essay, you don't want to make it about yourself. So I think, I feel, I believe it's not about you. There will be a class where you get to write a personal narrative and it will be about you. But not this one. And it doesn't really give us the how or the why. Like, why is it a good opportunity? That's not clear. And so if you're trying to develop your thesis statement, you want to make sure those two elements are included. And when you're writing your essay, if you don't have a strong thesis, you don't really have a foundation for your essay. Now, once you have developed that amazingly awesome thesis statement, thesis statement you'll create your outline. So outlines help prepare you to write. Um, it also helps you develop your essay by organizing your thoughts and ideas before you actually start writing your essay. Very basic structure for a five paragraph essay. Basic structure for a five paragraph essay is the introduction, those three body um, paragraphs, and a conclusion. Now you have to know how to make those paragraphs. Now you have to know how to make those paragraphs good. So I put we have to understand it. And the reason why I said we have to be able to understand it is so that you don't write to the reader. When you write an essay to the reader, you use second person. So words like you and your, but your essay is not about the reader. It is about your topic. So aiming for third person is really important when you're writing a formal essay. So here's a little trick you can use. Write as if you have an imaginary audience. Write to people. That way you don't write about yourself and you don't write to the reader. Because if I wrote, you want to be a middle school science teacher, you think that is beneficial, and you don't want to be a middle school science teacher, you don't want to keep on reading my essay. The next step is to make sure those paragraphs, is to make sure those paragraphs are good. So I have a list of three things, and my list might be, maybe other people have longer lists, maybe people don't have a list at all, but mine's simple, just these three things. So good paragraphs have unity, coherence and elaboration. Now, when you have unity, that just, when you have unity, that just means that each body paragraph has a topic sentence. 
If you haven't yet, make sure you check out the other course, the hamburger paragraph class that explains exactly how to structure a body paragraph. But the topic sentence is the main idea for the entire paragraph. And in that paragraph, you would include your supporting details. The supporting details are your examples, your explanations, and your descriptions. That helps create unity. But this doesn't mean that you'll have a good essay because you also need to have coherence. And have coherence. And coherence means all your sentences logically fit together. So you have to make sure your details are connected so it doesn't seem like you just put a bunch of sentences together and then put in a paragraph and then it kind of reads like a list. So how can you create coherence? You have to make sure it makes sense. And the way that you make sure it makes sense, and the way that you can make sure that it makes sense is the way that you order your details. This could be the least important to the most important or the most important to least important. You can also use transitional words or phrases. There are some examples down on the bottom. If you really love grammar, Transitional words are called conjunctive adverbs. You can check that course out too with all the grammar rules. Now, the final thing on my list is elaboration. Now, I want you to pay really now I want you to pay really close attention to this page because there are over 20 errors on this page. The errors are in spelling, punctuation, grammar, and formatting. So as I read through this list, see how many you can spot. And then at the very end, I will show you all the errors on this page. So number one, you want to use highly descriptive words. So vivid adjectives and adverbs, precise verbs and nouns. And here's a real life example. If someone asks you, how are you doing today? What would you answer? Like, what do you commonly respond with? If you said, I'm good or I'm fine. That's not very descriptive. People don't really know how you feel when you just say, I'm good or I'm fine. They can tell by the tone of your voice. So if you say, oh, I'm good versus I'm good. But when you're writing, the reader can't hear your voice. So they don't know your tone. But if you wrote that, you feel exhausted. People know what exhaustion feels like. Or if you wrote, I feel magnificent. They might start smiling just like I did. So use highly descriptive words. Give detailed definitions about your subject. Provide examples. Use compare and contrast. How's what you're writing about similar or how is it different from what you're writing about? Include facts or statistics. People like learning stuff. And if all else fails, think about sensory details. How can you write about how something looks, smells, sounds, tastes, and feels? That is how you can elaborate when you're writing. Now, the other thing you want to make sure you do when you're writing is pay attention to the punctuation, the content, to the punctuation, the content, and the spelling. All of those things matter. I'm using a meme because I think they're hilarious. But when these aren't correct, the reader may not understand what message you're trying to convey. So look at the first panel of this meme where it says, you said no more books. It's kind of aggressive. But on the other panel, I said, no, more books. See the difference? Now, that just covers the basics on how to structure and write a paragraph. Now, we're going to dive in a little deeper and focus on the definition essay. Now, a lot of less, um, essays tend to overlap. They all have common structure and similarities but there are things that make them specifically their own. So a definition essay is kind of like an informative essay, which is kind of like an expository essay, which is almost like research, but they're different. The definition essay is where you choose a word, a concept, a term, or an object, and then you have to define what it means. And the purpose of this essay is to help your reader, your imaginary audience, understand the meaning of that word, that concept, that term, or that object. So it's pretty broad. But again, you have to narrow it down. Now, even though it's called a definition essay, you don't get to use the dictionary. The focus is to write about the connotative meaning of that word or that phrase. Now, connotation often implies the emotional, the informal, or the slang cases of a word. So a quick example, if I look the word rat up in the dictionary, it tells me that a rat is a rodent and then dot, 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 dot. There's some more details. But there are some connotative meanings behind the word rat. So I like to use this as an example. And if you have siblings, please do not take offense if you're the oldest or the youngest or the one in between, or even if you're an only child. 
This is just an example. So a rat could be a person who tattles on other people. And if I'm trying to define this word outside the dictionary definition, I'd write about how younger siblings are always scurrying around like little rats waiting to tell on their older siblings. Or if you've ever heard the phrase, he or she ratted me out. That's the connotative use of the word. And you would define what that means. Now, a rat could also be someone who's dishonest or someone who's doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So older siblings, maybe you deserve to get ratted out. Maybe you were also participating in rat-like behavior and being sneaky. Now, I only have two examples. I need three because I need three body paragraphs. So if you happen to get stuck, you can use the dictionary because now you're adding in some elements of compare and contrast. You're like, this is what it means in the dictionary, but this is what it means outside of the dictionary. Now, I want you to pause and see if you can think of a word or a phrase that you use that doesn't necessarily match what's in the dictionary, or maybe it's not in the dictionary at all. Some other ways to approach this essay, you can take phrases like, I'm going to put you on the spot, or it's raining cats and dogs. What exactly does that mean? Or you can take words like family, love, faith, home, friendship. All of these words have dictionary definitions, but it doesn't mean that's how we define them. So family in the dictionary says it's the people that you're biologically related to. But I have a whole lot of family that I'm not biologically related to. I have a Nana that's not really my Nana. I have cousins that aren't really my cousins. And I call my best friend my sister. They're my family. How would I define that? Now, once you've completed all these steps, you've chose your topic, you've narrowed it down, you would then develop that outline to help you structure and write this essay. Stay tuned because I'm going to show you all the errors that were on that slide. Now, if you want to pause and see how many errors you can spot, pause now because I'm about to tell you all the errors on this page. Starting with number one, there's no space between the one and you's. And then all those words that are capitalized, highly descriptive words, definitions, example, compare, contrast, facts, sensory details, those are common nouns. They should be lowercase. And they are underlined and in italics. If you want to put emphasis on a word, that is completely fine, but choose one, not italics and underlined. Now, vivid adjectives, adverbs, that is not a thing. Those are two separate elements, so there should be a comma there. Then the semicolon, mm -mm, shouldn't be there. After verbs, there should be a comma. And after nouns, there should be period. And number two, give detailed definitions of the subject. It's wrong preposition. It should be about. And then we don't need to repeat or detail. Or, or it would read as give detailed or detail. Doesn't make any sense. And then in number four, comparison and or contrast. Well, we want to make sure we use matching words. So it should be compare, contrast, and then and or or, but not both. And then on my list where it says one, two, three, four, six, six, wrong number. Statistics is spelled wrong in real number five that says number six. And then number six, the real one, it says use sensory details that appeals. That is the wrong subject verb agreement. So it should be sensory details that appeal. And then the number five is spelled out in word form. Well, it should be spelled out in word form when we use um, small numbers. And then that part at the very bottom where it says find the errors with the S in parentheses. The S shouldn't be in parentheses. And there also needs to be in punctuation there. So a whole lot of errors on this page, which is why it's also really important to reread your work and revise it. <sighs> Sheesh, one done. That took approximately 15 minutes. So if I do one, two, three, four, five.